Boketov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're going to turn our focus to Syria this morning. A lot of things are happening over uh, in this part of the world. Clearly a flashpoint, no doubt. Those of you that, uh, speaking of flashpoint, don't forget we do broadcast on Hebrew Nation Radio there as well. Be going on later uh, today with Bonnie Harvey in our program there called Flashpoint. You can check out the old archives as well, some interesting broadcasts. Uh, no doubt. Uh, but anyway, very cold here too, by the way, uh, over here in uh, east of Prague. We're in the far east here, but uh, it's minus seven this morning. Uh, had a winter storm blow through yesterday, dropping snow everywhere. So why everybody's enjoying warmer weather in uh, Florida and southern Alabama and Georgia, places like that. We are under uh, pretty frigid temperatures here. One reason why I'm wearing a sweatshirt this morning. Anyway, uh, Afrin has fallen into the hands, or at least Northern Afrin has fallen into the hands of the Turkish military, and it is not going to be good for those that are still remaining there. This overwhelming force, it has gotten very little attention by the world. Uh, the United Nations doesn't even seem to care what is happening in uh, uh, Afrin. And, and of course, the United States, no one coming to the aid of the Kurdish people there, the Christians, the Yazdis, uh, uh, all the different people that have been living there that, that used Afrin as a city of refuge during the seven year long battle of a civil war. And now the Turkish government has turned it completely upside down, shelling the city, finally destroying the hospital that was there that was helping the people that were uh, being bombed and attacked, the only place where you could get surgery done. Uh, that was uh, bombed by the uh, Turkish military. And now the people are trying to flee this city there. Uh, we're seeing this coming out on Sputnik, of course, uh, on Amman News as well. The Lebanon News breaking Turkish back forces storm Afrin City in an all-out assault is what they're saying there. Uh, it, it only troubles my heart because as these evil men go through this city here, no doubt the women that will be raped and, and, and the city just pillaged, the people will be murdered, the the Kurdish people will be genocide, and, and I say genocide, and I'll tell you something, this particular French article right here, Battle of Afrin, silence on the massacre that is against the Kurds. This is a French newspaper here called Figaro Vox, and that's at, uh, I'll post it in the bottom though, L-E-F-I-G-A-R-O dot F-R, French news source. They are actually reporting here on the 13th of this month that the Turkish forces will literally will actually try to um, totally wipe out the Kurdish population. They actually use the word genocide in their article. And they, they talk about how that the uh, Kurds have faced several different attempts of annihilation under that of Saddam Hussein. Uh, the gassing of these people, and now the Turkish pres President Erdogan totally unimpeded as he goes through this city to wipe out as many Kurds as he possibly can. And it's really a shame, not only, as I said before, on Russia for not helping them, when Russia too says they're one of the best uh, fighters against ISIS. In fact, Russia was the first one to recommend to the Syrian government an autonomy in their new constitution that the Kurdish people would have autonomy wherever they happen to live at inside of Syria. Uh, but even President Trump began to work with the Kurdish people. But it wasn't long before we saw Rex Tillerson working with uh, the Turkish government saying, oh, sorry, we forgot our strong ties to Turkey and the Kurds got thrown under the bus once again. And uh, of course, Rex Tillerson is already out. And do understand, friends, I realize there's a lot of things about Rex Tillerson that were not good. I clearly understand that, get that, have no problem with that. The only things that I was pointing out were the couple of things that I saw that he was a little bit better on. That was, he was trying to make peace with North Korea when President Trump was telling him, him he was wasting his time. And of course, the deal with Iran. Uh, now, getting though back to what's going on uh, again, it is a very serious situation that is happening in uh, Afrin. And we'll move on over to other parts as well. We also have this article from TASS Russian News. This was on March 13th. It says U.S. planning missile and bombing raid against Damascus. 
according to Top Brass. After the provocation, the U.S. plans to accuse Syria's government forces of using chemical weapons, according to the Russian Top Brass. Now, we've already showed you the clear proofs exactly how this has happened in the past. In fact, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, when there were certain news groups out there, supposedly alternative media sources that were telling, telling us after the Khan Shikun incident, they knew the name of the pilot, they knew which plane he flew, they knew which bomb he used, they knew that the Russians gave it to him, like that they had all this intelligent sources. Well, yeah, if you're connected with the U.S. military whatsoever, uh, if you're connected with the Israeli military whatsoever, it was total knowledge to the American forces what the attack was going to be, who was going to be carrying it out because the Russians had identified this. We brought that out in that detailed report there uh, uh, about the situation in Khan Shikun, something that it just tickled the ears of the people. They were so excited because someone knows the details, who did it, when they did it, and why they did it. Yeah, it was very open news. Russia made it clear because it wasn't a chemical weapon that was being used. In fact, if that bomb had dropped on Khan Shikun Street there, you would have a crater uh, about eight foot deep in the road, not some little tiny little dent in the road. Anyway... Unfortunately, the deep state, when I say deep state, CIA has been uh, very much involved in using and training of the jihadists to use chemical weapons. We've seen this from Western sources that have been able to identify this. Uh, so when Russia says the U.S. is getting ready to plan another chemical weapons attack with these jihadist forces there, doesn't surprise me a bit in the world that that would happen. Now, most American soldiers would never go along with something like this. They wouldn't have, couldn't even imagine that this would happen. But don't worry. Those little CIA operatives are the ones that work with the jihadists. So you don't have to worry about the, the genuine American soldier that's for humanity. You know, that's not interested in just murdering people to murder them. Uh, so anyways, as we go on into this article here, though, it does say that uh, the militants are preparing pro provocations which, with the use of chemical agents in Syria to justify a massive U.S. strike against Damascus government neighborhoods. Chief of Russian General Staff Valery uh, Ger Geras Gerasimov said on Tuesday, according to uh, Gerasimov, Russia has hard facts about preparations for staging the use of chemical weapons against civilians by the government forces. After the provocations, the U.S. plans to accuse Syrian government forces of using chemical weapons. He added that the United States plans to furnish the so-called evidence of alleged mass civilian deaths through the fault of Syrian government and Russian leadership supporting it. As a countermeasure, Washington plans to deliver a missile and bomb strike against Damascus government districts. Okay, this is what the Russian general says. He stressed that there are Russian military officials in Damascus, in the Syrian Defense Ministry facilities, and in the event a th of a threat to our military servicemen's lives, Russia's armed forces will take retaliatory measures to target both the missiles and their delivery vehicles. Now, it's pretty obvious that Russia's planning on sinking some ships of the United States if this were to happen. And I can assure you one thing, if you don't forget now, I think it was uh, uh, Secretary of Defense General Mattis that spoke about that if they ever launch an attack on Syria with Russia present there, the first thing they'll have to do is take out the air defense shield. Now, that's clearly a fulfillment of biblical prophecy when it talks about the bars of Damascus, that they would be taken out. Those bars of Damascus are those S-300, S-400 systems, but those bars will be broken. And that is a biblical prophecy yet to be fulfilled. I don't have that in front of me right now, friends, but that's a very serious uh, situation that is no doubt on the horizon. But Russia will retaliate. Mind you, if their forces are hit, and some might argue that the Wagner Group soldiers that died which it was actually 14. I know the American number says hundreds, but those were the militants they were fighting with. That in that regard there, Russia kind of winked at that, just like they did back in Derezor, uh, what was it, a year and a half or so ago when 
the NATO forces bombed supposedly ISIS, but were bombing Syrian and Russian forces there. Russia never admitted to it, but they had 18 Russian soldiers killed in that attack as well. Maybe with the elections going on in Russia right now today, maybe Putin is waiting to re-secure his presidential seat before he moves forward, but I am very concerned this whole situation is about to go completely out of control in the Middle East there. It will definitely be the flashpoint. Uh, Moving into another, of course, Newsweek also brought this out. Let me show you what Newsweek says about this very story here. It says, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley has railed against the Syrian government's recent recently intensified campaign to retake the insurgent-held district of eastern Ghouta outside of Damascus, accusing Syria and and its Russian-Iranian allies of mounting civilian casualties. As a fellow permanent UN Security Council member, Russia has vetoed a number of resolutions targeting Assad's government and has accused the insurgents of shelling the nearby Damascus city. Haley also blamed Russia for breaking a 30-day ceasefire agreement reached earlier this month. All right, now, let's watch this. When the international community consistently fails to act, there are times when states are compelled to take their own action, Haley told the UN Security Council on Monday, citing the current situation in Eastern Ghouta as an example of this and the Hill report, the, the Hill report of that one. All right. That's what we see then. So we're seeing even the verbiage coming from Nikki Haley, the ambassador to the United Nations for the U.S., that the U.S. is getting ready to take an action against Damascus. That it will definitely be Isaiah 17 that will fall. And don't forget, do not forget, it's the so-called Christian nations that God holds accountable for the fall of Damascus. And we know that because he says, you have forgotten the rock of your salvation. If that's not the United States, I don't know who it is. And friends, you might might want your ears tickled when I say that. But in the United States, we took God out 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 of the schools. We took the Bibles out of schools. God is not mentioned in political arenas any longer. I think Paul Begley is about the only person I ever heard in a political arena that actually mentioned the name of Jesus Christ. But believe me, it's just something you do not hear anymore. God has been removed from the U.S. altogether. It is not considered politically correct. And the Christians know from Paul himself of the New Testament that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is that rock that was smitten in the wilderness by Moses. And God says in Isaiah 17, you have forgotten the rock of your salvation. This is why Damascus falls. This is why you allow the Christians to be murdered by the jihadists that you are backing because you've forgotten the rock of your salvation. That's not Israel. Israel does not recognize the fact that Yeshua is that rock. All right. Now, <laughs> let's bring it home here for you. You want? Let me show you what the Syrians that came out of Uskuda had to say. This is on Rupley. They used us as human shields. Uskuda residents recount terror of fleeing. All right. Now, I'm going to play it from the beginning. I'll, 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 I'll translate it as it goes. One second. We want to cut that volume down because unless you speak Arabic. Well, let's cut the volume over here, make it a little bit easier. All right. We, we, ha- we are 10 and we could not buy a kilo of flour. We starved. In addition, we wanted to flee, but they prevented us. We fled against their will. They fired at us. Talking about shooting at them with guns. Half of the people were shot. Look at our children, bare feet, hungry, and without clothes. But they showed no mercy. She's talking about the U.S.-backed jihadists and Free Syrian, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and all the different militants that are trying to overthrow Damascus. This is what they did to them. And this is what NATO is backing. All right? They kept the commodities in stores for their benefit while 
our children starve to death and they fired at us even as even when even we wanted to get out now here comes another lady they were living with us next to our houses and inside them they would open a road amongst the houses to be able to move they would not leave and we would not dare to say get out then the shelling was over and it is the they used us as human shields we were not allowed to move that's just one of many incidents so you see this is what Russia was dealing with they needed human shields the white helmets needed body counts not to mention they got to still stage their gas attacks so they can kill a bunch of more civilians so there's a, I'm sure there's no doubt there's a lot of civilians that still haven't got to leave yet because they need bodies what a humanitarian disaster and the Syrian government trying to push these militants back and unfortunately NATO continues to arm them it's it's just a disaster friends also turn in one other issue here before we close in our broadcast for today here uh, this is put out on Michael D's Twitter page there really appreciate Michael I think he went to the United States if I'm not mistaken to do a visit there and I think Michael is from Ukraine it says the Minister of Defense of Belarus and the State Secretary of Security Council have been ordered to check the combat readiness of the armed forces military discipline equipment and the general state of the armed forces will be checked order came from uh, Lukashenko himself and of course what is this speaking about here there is definitely a very serious situation um, they're very concerned as we can see the s300 system here being moved about inside of the country there they're concerned that if something breaks out with Russia and the United States and Syria it's also going to end up being a war directly uh, against Russia Moscow Belarus is one country that kind of stands in the way to Moscow there are other ways around it st. Petersburg is very close to Estonia and uh, but very troubling situation indeed we're gonna be kind of watching the Eastern European front to see what's going on here as much as we can updating you as we go I'm Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live troubling things friends and we know many of these things are going to happen as far as biblical prophecy is concerned but you still got to be a voice for what's truth and stand against it Isaiah did not say that the fall of Damascus was a praise thing of God he prophesied it would happen he prophesied that it would be the defense force for the uh, for, for Ephraim which are the house of Israel that were believers in Yeshua but he said that'll all fall and they'll go into exile much like the children of Israel did and don't forget when the children of Israel went into exile they went in as prisoners it's a very sad situation friends and all because those Christian nations supposed to be Christian nations and they are Christian nations you forgot the rock of your salvation I'm very troubled by it friends I'm Stephen Benoon you're watching Israeli News Live Shalom in a world of aim Shalom